Hello, hello. I look at mod actions. Comment added by Trill. I fucked it. Okay. Um. What? Where did that message even come from, dude? What? what like, what are you talking about? <laughs> where, where, where is that? I don't even know where to find that stuff. In my own chat, dude. That's fucked up. In the mod view. Uh. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know where to go for that. <laughs> oh, that was, uh, I think that was Beef's comment on last stream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was Beef's comment. <laughs> it, uh, for whatever reason, it, um... I think it like, uh, I can't even remember. I think it, uh, it, the auto mod got it and I had to, I had to throw it in. Oh man. Jesus. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm here to support you. I appreciate it. Nice. I've made almost no contribution to this topic. I'm here to support you. All right, we got the water, got the water going. I don't actually have a, a gallon. I've got a two liters, but two liters over the stream should be not bad, you know. Uh, so disappoint you yet again. Perfect. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm, uh, getting distracted. Uh, so, this week, the world building prompt was Ilgrad and the Karth Orc. Um, touching up on, what was it? Uh, the lore for our Callisto game, which should be under the way, or underway, under the way, underway, uh, come next week. So. Uh, there's some stuff I definitely have to do. I have to, um, uh, t -t 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 -t. yeah, I have to take care of some stuff in the Discord so everybody's, uh, good to go. And then from there, uh, yeah. So, uh, I know initially there's a lot of chatter in this, uh, prompt, mostly done along by me, take care of some people, yeah, um, fueled by me with, uh, some of my responses, as well as, uh, videos and stuff like that, so, I'll have to, uh, comb through the beginning to make sure I don't miss anything, but, um, overall, I think it should be, uh, pretty, pretty good to go, um, it looks like there's a considerable, well, I, 75 messages. I know there's a lot of talk, but I think even then, I don't know if it's enough to. I mean, I think for the most part. Well, scrolling through it, it looks like there's actually a lot of talk, so. I was gonna say, this looks like one of the more active, uh. active, uh. prompts, but. maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you guys have had a, um. Uh, a good week, you know. Um, hope everything has been good to go for you guys. I know it's been a long one. More, it was heckled and shit talked more. Yeah, yeah, there was a, a decent amount of uh, heckling going on. Uh, hopefully, people have followed the um, followed the <laughs> the. I don't know what we would call it. The, like, suggestions? Works a bitch at the moment. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure, man. This week was fucking... Oh. It was a tough one, you know? I'm I'm still feeling the effects of it. Still feeling... 
feeling quite uh, run down a bit. Uh, need some mods to clean it up. Yeah. Oh yeah, didn't I say I, I was gonna, but then I just never did. Yes, I'm a liar. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, so to go over the prompt really quick, uh, we've decided that the region visually is Roman, but culturally more in line with feudal Japan, right? So, uh, this gives uh, Callisto the type of court intrigue that we're looking for, as well as the uh, daimyo style of warlord and clan inviting that is perfect for Callisto in general. Um, yeah, so, uh, I'm not entirely sure if everything is taken care of, but at the very least, by the end of this, we'll have all of the clan names, some interesting details about the region, um, and uh, from there, we will be uh, all set to go um, with uh, running this uh, this game. So, right. Uh, okay. So, <sighs> Jesus. All right. <laughs> The first suggestion is um, the Wang Ao clan. They dress like Wang Ao's and like to swoop in and shit all over everyone's good time. Yeah, sorry to keep me awake. Yeah, exactly, Dom. I appreciate you, but, you know, we got to push through, you know. That's how it goes, unfortunately. <laughs> keeper. A keeper? I don't know. Maybe, maybe... One of the clans could be, you know, uh, take over the, the, the last part of that. Like to swoop in and shit all over everybody's good time. A lot of framework for people to make new clans, too. Yeah, smaller, like, you know, inter-regional type stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, Wang Ao clan, I think, is unfortunately missed. But, um... Clan Shouter. <laughs> All right. uh, let me get some music going. What's up, dude? Your placeholder was rejected. Boo. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So, uh, coming up with the first, uh, we'll say the first keeper, you know, as far as suggestions go, um, is, uh, let's see, three. Ice wheat. Um, oh, Jesus. Unbolden this. Wait. This is wrong. There we go. <laughs> At least you got the ball rolling. It's something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so. Uh, ice wheat, a cold, hearty grain that, when it ends up seeding, can be harvested at any time of the year. Anything left unharvested remains for the next season, ensuring fresh grain is always available. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we have a name for the... A name for one of the regions, uh, and I guess this will be colloquially called the Wheatlands. Officially, uh, Jalou Vilam. Jalou Vilam. A little late, but you have arrived. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, you're here for your weed. Exactly. Okay. Pink area is big lumber zone. Jelu right. Velan. All of your weed belongs to that. yeah. What um did we only yeah, Arbor Domus. There we go. Perfect. Alright, um, so I guess I will call these two regions there. So, 
Um, yeah, we got chatty in this one. Yeah, I gotta like pick through. Um, so I think, yeah, so the blue, light blue region. How do I fucking... I guess, hmm. I'll add it at the top, actually. Um, I'll make this another one, heading three. I'll just do region names. Uh, and then we'll do Jolu Valam, light blue, and then Arbor, Domus, uh, pink. I think it's supposed to be purple, but maybe it comes across pink. I don't know. Perfect. Yeah. And then, uh, this would be the wheat lens. Um, and this would be the the lumber zone. <laughs> Burling. We're just gonna straight up call the major town in it Burling. Where is uh what does Burling come from? Is that a, a is that a name of a Canadian town? Is that is that the joke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delete my comments. Yeah. Who am I, you know? Okay, um, yeah, since these don't really have, uh, descriptions written out, we'll figure them out in a bit, but for now, we'll leave it as is. If the, if, a, if another region or province or anything like that comes up, we'll go ahead and, um, it's what you call when you ride logs down the river. Oh, call it barreling. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, barreling. Barreling. Okay. Um, I'll put this, I'll put the, like... The region names that don't really have like a a description um we'll go ahead and put under region names but if they have a description we'll put under like a normal entry uh which uh incidentally enough we have a, a one that does have a description all right there you go. we've got nixerum uh let's see so uh, and actually, I'll go ahead and add it up here as well. Next room, red. Uh, I don't know. I'll change that to purple because I think that's actually what it is. All right, cool. Unless you are a tourist and it's just screaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. It's called Burling. Last time, last person I saw doing it, you know, they were screaming their ass off. All right. <laughs> so, uh, okay. The northern province, red on the map, is one of the more recent additions to the influence of Ilgrad. Officers and generals that didn't follow intended paths or posed a threat can't just be killed off, as that would be against the honor code. On the flip side, land was seen as a great honor, so generals started giving away large plots of land to them. All those rich officers hired workers to work their mines and farm their land. Those down on their luck or exiles from other clans would come and start communities. At first, this new province couldn't even provide for itself, so it was largely left alone and functionally independent. Over time, new rare resources were found, sources of food established, and fortresses built. And with that, fighting took place. Grandsons of generals fighting sons of exile. There were no clear winners, but one clan found help in none other than the Emperor. Hmm. Uh, we do not have an emperor, so I have to figure that one out. Um, by swearing fealty once again, Nixerum was established a proper province with all of its rights and duties. The capital, largest POI on the map in the mountains, was established near a massive stone fortress called Gratum, which is where the large host gathered and marches to the smaller clans to subjugate. Granting land in Nixerum still happens... On occasion, for members, for members high in the society, which is one of the causes of the instable politics there. Cool. Uh, perfect. Nice. Found help from the janitor. Yeah, yeah, the janitor. Um, none other than the. I think. Do we have like a? I think. I want to say that, uh, what's his name? Ice suggested some hierarchical, hierarchical, 
here article ranks uh it says imperator title of the warlord who holds amless rise in ilgrad the highest military authority in the northern land yeah cool uh we'll just put imperator then right instead of emperor imperator nice though i like it so this is basically just like you know a lot of people got land grants but it's like you know it's almost uh i mean i can only kind of i i think this is probably pretty common right but um definitely common like in rome i'm pretty sure like land grants were given uh to like what is now england right whenever rome took it over um it happened often right uh, i think uh england did it with uh people moving to the united states yeah modern day yeah north american it's like uh yeah i guess that happens a lot right yeah granted all over the place yeah. and it was more like you, you can go but you know it's gonna be tough you gotta you gotta figure it out so only after the marion reforms i appreciate the clarification dude thanks all right there was an actual reward here it's more misused as a white elephant perfect good very nice all right before that plebeians were shafted damn dude When Matt Damon got off the planet, <laughs> that's the Martian, dude. Did you ever see that movie? I just watched it recently, actually. I don't know if anybody here has actually watched the the Martian. Um, laws. There we go. I wish I was as good at world building as all you fucks. Uh, a couple of times. You seen the Martian? Oh, okay. <laughs> Not even 30 minutes in and Ram is talking about shafts. There you go, dude. Ah, fuck. It really fucked this um, whole thing up. Um, here, let's do... What if we did something like... No. Let's do like one. Maybe this would work. Okay. I'm going to have to do it like this, but... Um, we'll just remove this line as well. So what we'll do is we'll just do it like, there we go. One. And then I have to do one at a time. Exactly. That. Now it keeps them here. What the fuck? But whatever. Um. All right. This is fucking annoying me. <laughs> It's crazy. Flag rights. Taxation. The last thing an American wants to see, dude. Taxation? How fucking dare you. Don't you ever tax me, brother. Alright. Okay. We got them all in. Names all pinning. Ice had some great suggestions. Perfect. Uh, Martian was better than the one with Matthew McConaughey. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Wait, you think uh, you think the Martian was better than uh, what the fuck was the one with Matthew McConaughey? Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, Interstellar. Yeah, that was it. You think that movie sucked? Dude. Visually, I thought that movie was fucking wild. I saw it in theaters and my fucking mind was blown. I was like, oh my god. Fine until he went inside the wormhole. Dude, it's like at the very end, the last, that's like the end of the movie. It's like, I liked it until that part. He is the ghost. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the robot's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I like... Yeah, I thought Interstellar was good, man. He is the ghost. 
The end ruined it. Ah, uh, dude. It was it was too it was too fantastical. You're like if if a person went into a, a fucking wormhole, it was a it wasn't even a wormhole. It was a um. What was the? It was a black hole, right? Like. I don't know what the, I don't know what the modern science is around that, but the end, it, <laughs> the end ended it. It was good until the end. You're just sad it ended. Yeah. Yeah. I has, yeah not, I'm not an astro scientist. Dude. Hey, I heard, I heard that uh, they did a lot of work on the science in that movie. So, that's, <laughs> fucking, um, dude, I'm going to go to a planet for five minutes and it's going to be 20 years. Dude, that's it. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm not a space surgeon. Yeah, no shit. Uh, so, but yeah, I like the movie. Um, I didn't mind the ending, you know? Uh, yeah. They call me the doctor. I just reached into a bag of chips that I've been eating for like a while and my hands were covered in like dust and cat hair. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, intergalactic Ekros, dude, it's coming. It's co they call me the doctor. The doctor is in the house, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, we called Ignis the doctor. Yeah. You're done, dude. You're, you're finished. All right. Okay. So let's uh, jump into the some of these laws. We'll see what we'll see what works, what doesn't work. Beef, get your fucking life in order. That is deranged. It yeah, coming from Dawn, dude. You know you're you know you're down bad when Dawn is trying to give you life advice. <laughs> I'm just fucking. <laughs> so, um, all right, here we go. <laughs> uh, okay, let's let's see a, a fur ball. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. It's all banter, dude. All right, um. <laughs> let's let's get on to this. Uh, clan folk or common folk. While most rights are granted throughout, clan folk are higher in status. They have a right to audience and petition and can in that way influence the bigger picture. <laughs> That's the new charm. For Dude, I don't even know what the fuck that means. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like this. So, so it essentially adds like the hierarchical sense, right? Cool. Uh, trials. When an offense is committed, the accused must stand trial before the next ranking chief. Punishments must be carried out by the one who lays the sentence. Trial by combat is common. Holy shit. Before the next ranking chief. I, I'm, I'm curious what that means, though. Is this like a, a hierarchical system where, like, if they commit an offense... They must stand trial before the... I'm trying to... That part of the sentence confuses me. Yeah, definitely not using chief. It'll probably be the one... Yeah. For clarity. Yeah, yeah. Change the R to a W. For fun. Um, yeah, not chief. Uh, I'll have to go down to the whenever Lord of Coin, Argentari, Lord of Title. Uh, hmm, the Shogun. Okay, so the Legatus, I think. But, but what is like next ranking? That's what I mean. Uh, I don't know if your intention here was like, um... Uh, oh, that was fucking... That was Don. Uh, before the next... So, before the Legatus, I assume? Legatus? Legatus? You tell me. Legatus? I couldn't tell you. I'm not Roman. Uh... Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Legatus. 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 Punishments must be carried out by the one who lays a sentence, try by common. Okay, so. Yeah, it went up one link in the chain. Legola. Yeah, Legolas. <laughs> Legolas. Legatus. <laughs> hmm. Uh, custom. Da, 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 da. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I I get the idea. All right. So like a commoner would go before the. Well, a clan folk, I guess. Hmm. We have to figure out the. We have to figure that out and then kind of come back to trials and shit. Uh, okay. Um. Flag rights. Each clan has their own flag, which is seen as near sacred. Birth, oaths, and funerals take place in the presence of a flag. Burning of another flag is a dec declaration. Declaration. Right. Of war. Nice. Taxation. Cer certain Uh Certain percentages of revenue or raw goods are des destined for taxation. Commoners pay their clan officer, who pays the clan chief, who pays the, um, yeah, so in this case it'd be like, who pays the, uh, the guy, the, the, the gatus. Not abiding the tax rules, we'll say clan... Like head of clan or something. Like that. Basically, uh, not abiding the tax rules is one of the only way, only legal ways titles of land can be stripped from a family. Okay, nice. And then last but not least, where's this shit going ISIS way then? Yeah, wall rights, clan father. Yeah, the clan father. Well, the clan leader, clan leader. Jeez. We'll just put clan leader. Right? I don't know. Clan officer. Yeah. I think there's too many. Clan father, I have sinned. The big comrade, indeed. Yeah. We gotta get the USSR references in there, man. <laughs> so, uh, not abiding by the tax rules. Only. Okay. So, wall rights. A town or village needs to be granted rights to build a wall or any other defensive structure to operate themselves. Uh, armies have this right by default to make sure settlements under their protection are safe. Nice. <laughs> Clan Polito, I'm assuming, is the intended, uh... <laughs> Alright, perfect. Alright, up next. Polito. Polito. Perfect. Okay. Up next, we've got the Mercetta, I assume. Okay. Whoops. Close that out. Oh, clicked on something. Okay. One of the main connections to the rest of the continent is Mercetta. The stronghold of trade in the mountains, orange on map, okay. The clan holding this fort essentially has a grip on the mountain pass, the Krasny, and the export and import of goods from there. Many towers and redoubts uh, dot the mountains to not only protect the revenue, but more importantly from invaders. Krasny is well known for its conquests of the desert, so the watchmen keep their eyes open and are prepared to light the beacons at, any, at a sign of any threat. Okay. Relations. With adjacent clans are strenuous, with many viewing the high tariffs unjust. While many resources are earmarked for defense of the realm, it takes just one greedy chief to become a big problem. There we go. One greedy legatus. Strenuous? Yeah.
strained. Yeah. Dude, they're they're Dutch. All right. <laughs> Relations with adjacent clans are strained. Yeah. <laughs> well, that person has a weird Irish accent. Yeah. <laughs> What is the world come? Why am I the hinged and ranged one today? Dude, it's all you. You're going hog wild. Nice. How diddly dare you? There we go. Should have paid attention in school. Nice. All right. Dude, we got a, we got a Callum classic. Coming up. I have no idea how to pronounce this. Sikatrix, I think. Sikatrix. No idea. Okay. <laughs> do the Dutch use the waterfall system in school like the Belgians do? Got it. We hope not, you know? Okay. So, cicatrices, I guess. I have no idea how to say this shit. Um, scars are seen as the most refined attire one can wear. At high level meetings, it's not uncommon for existing scars to be embellished in order to make them stand out. But being found to be faking a scar can be met with social exile. Physical retribution might leave a real scar, which is unbecoming of a coward who would fake one. Scars are often judged for their authenticity. Youths might give each other prominent scars in order to be better perceived, but this is usually obvious to older orcs and is frowned upon. The only scar given for aesthetic purposes, which is acceptable, is that given to use by leaders, elders, as a mark of coming of age? The cicatrix. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just thinking. Yeah, these guys would get on so well with Vulcans. Maybe that's why the, maybe that's why the relationship between, um, uh, Uruk and Vogmodir is like okay at the moment. Right. Uh, not only that, but uh, it kind of translate over translates over into the hobgoblins. If you remember uh, during that campaign, I had it so that like the hobgoblin was like, "Here, go ahead and you know." Uh, there was that scene between the hobgoblin, the red hobgoblin, and um. Yeah, there was like the whole honor thing, right? Like, you know, fucking... It was like a cutting. I don't know if it was... I don't know what he cut. I think he like cut like a small wound on his chest or something. Or yeah, he was like, yeah, go ahead and strike me, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, for, I, for, I, I can't remember the scene off the top of my head. If I looked at my notes, I could probably find it. But yeah. Okay, cool. This, ritual, this ritualistic scarring comes from Ator. Very green knight, yeah. Um, I don't know if I like that name, uh, because then we're kind of like overlapping. Ator kind of sounds like Arthur, which sounds like Arthur, right? Like we're kind of uh, doubling up on some of the ideas. But so the ritualistic scarring comes from, we'll say, a historical leader, right? Let's just do that comes from a historical leader uh, who united some of the orc populations at the time, right? We'll say this leader gave cicatrices to members of his war band, both to assert dominance over them and for identification. Uh, Yous are allowed to, to request this type and location of their coming-of-age scar, but the decision ultimately lies with the person administering it. Rather painful, the process involves treating the scar such that it heals, but remains very prominent for a long time. Along with the overall quality, this usually means it's very, it's easily recognizable. 
Oh, <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? Um, <laughs> this is very German. Uh, the uh, the German facial scarring, right? Um, with the the menser scars, right? Is anybody aware of this? The dueling scars? Yeah. Um. It reminds me of that a lot. Prussian rather than German. Eh, you know. What's the difference, you know? I'm just kidding. Very common in the Navy. <laughs> what do you think about it? No. <laughs> the pointy helmets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, screw your accuracy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know it was I know it was very um very prominent, especially with like the uh especially in the German military up leading up to World War One, I, I believe. Um Yeah. Very uh Yeah, hasting. Yeah, there you go, dude. Okay. Um so let's yeah, World War Two as well. Yeah, he knows it was in Europe before Europe. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So we read recognizable. So different tribes may have different pattern archetypes, such as a certain number of strokes, or only straight lines, or even a certain number of intersections. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Now we have to listen to the Sabaton for the answers. Displaying your favorite. Heydrich had a very prominent one. Yeah. Uh, dis displaying your favorite best scar is something that is socially sought after, and scars can occur anywhere upon the body. However, it is seen as improper to simply remove or omit an item of clothing such that the scar might be visible. Okay, so you can't. Yeah. Heydrich. Uh, assassinated by the Dutch? Dude, I'm telling you, they're up to some shit, man. You cannot trust these people. Um. <laughs> yeah, the beef isn't latching onto this. Uh, as such, many, mainly at social gatherings or in the higher echelons, uh, individuals will try to fashion or have f fashioned clothes which reveal a certain scar as naturally as possible. For example, someone with a scar down their torso might wear an open jacket or shirt, a scar on the flank. A scar on the flank could be exposed by wearing a toga, which exposes. The Dutch have done nothing wrong. Dude. I'm telling you, I read about the atrocities of the Dutch. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> don't don't get me started. A penile scar, Jesus Christ. Yeah, there it is, dude. They killed a Nazi. Dude, they weren't called that in World War One. <laughs> Oh, this one you did. Jesus. <laughs> no, but yeah, I think uh, Hydric is like the, the, a very monstrous uh, character, if I'm not mistaken, in World War Two. So. These are all just comedic jokes, you know. <laughs> but yeah, facial scarring very prominent. I think they would pack it with um, horse hair to uh, ensure that the scar was like as nasty as it could be. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I'm I'm pretty sure I remember reading that that they get the cuts, especially like the facial scars, and they would pack it with horse hair to uh, to make it more prominent whenever they whenever it uh, yeah healed up. Cool. I like this. <laughs> we keep tro underestimating the Dutch. Dude, I told you, I read about their, their, um, how do you pack it with horse hair? I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, let's see. Oops. Maybe I'm mistaken. 
They seem to have nice roads from what I've heard. Let's see. Uh, let me see, let me see. Yeah, I remember hearing this. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I remember hearing this uh, in one of the like World War II documentaries, and they were talking like randomly, like if if you didn't get it on like on purpose, some people would scar their own face, and then they would take like bits of horsehair and like push it into the cut, the wound, and they would open the wound more and more. No, no, this was like a proper history channel, dude. It's it's the one I was telling you about. That uh, Romania has a, a genuine history channel. It's not, it's not all ancient aliens. Yeah. Cool. I like it. Fox history. <laughs> <laughs> Nazis on ketamine. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think that I think it, the facial scarring came up because the character that they were talking about in the documentary um, Was um, I think Let's see It was Otto Skorzeny That's who they were talking about uh, and if you look him up, he's got a huge, huge, um, scar on, uh, like a cross from his, like, ear to his lip and shit, so. But yeah. Addicted to morphine. There we go. Alright. Let's move forward. No more clowning around talking about World War Three. <laughs> A horse or a horse car. <laughs> Dude, what's the difference? No, I'm just, I'm just, um, okay. So. I got headbutted in a bar fight once. Have you seen a horse car? Yeah, have you seen a horse car, dude? That's the question. I also lost the fight. Hey, we can't win them all, dude. <laughs> All right, dude. Up next, dude. Look at this. This one is so nice. The fucking um, ice out here working, working the fucking uh, the uh, whatever. I don't know, whatever it is. The way this all looks nice. Okay, so some suggested uh, titles and hair article. Arch or hierarchical, archical ranks. Uh, Imperator is the title of the warlord who holds Amleth's rise in Ilgrad, the highest military authority in the Northern Land. Uh, Legatus, Legatus. You tell me. Uh, a lord of war or a commander of several war bands. The nominal title for a regional warlord. It's like listening to Chris spell, dude. Yeah. The Argentati, Argentari. Argentity, you know, a lord of coin. Some fight for the glory of battle and the thrill of conquest. Some fight for profit, and then there are those who profit from it all. Pronunciation, pronunciation, cianation. It's <laughs> pronunciation. Let's go. <laughs> when my spouse reads my comic, he reads it aloud and intentionally, intentionally pronounces everything wrong eh cross <laughs> perfect the duxiotomus duxiotomus a lord by title old money sans money the noble poor every region has its own customs around how these are awarded to whom and how in ilgrad the responsibility for the annual hosting of noble families from other regions, provinces, is levied on a Duxiotomus, who is selected directly by the Imperator. 
Nice. I think we should get Chris to spell, Trill to read, and I'll correct the fact. Be nice. Yeah. Can we have tomorrow's stream be interactive like this as well? <laughs> yeah, can we have the game streams just be fully interacting? Interactive? We're not actually playing a game, dude. We're just talking. Beef's more stable. Other half thinks Shad Horse has a nice name. This is a fact. Perfect. Okay. Past the Duxiotomus, we've got Miscellanea, I think. Let me see. Whoops. Too far. Okay. So, we've got... Domus Cotero. A house of records. Uh, a house, mansion, estate, or fortress in each region which serves as a repository of various treaties, trade agreements, and the amount and nature of various ties and uh, tributes owed. Cotero is also slang for small knife, and a house of records is also referred to as the house of knife by common folk. Pretty cool. Tormentum Diabolus. Infernal machinery. Siege engines, ballistae, catapults, and the like. Prevailing opinion is that war conducted at a distance. Oh, wait. The prevailing opinion is that war conducted at a distance is for cowards. Nice. Tormentum Di Diabolus. We might have to change Diabolus. Maybe we can just go like Tormentum. I don't know. Because devils aren't like a thing just yet, you know? Or maybe they are. Maybe that's a thing. The Tormentum thing is half jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. All right, and uh, last but not least on the miscellanea, Aratri, Aratri, formerly titled Custodes Aratri, Keepers of Plows. They started. I mostly wrote it because the Latin Roman word for machinery is tormentum. It's <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank the non-existent Ekros gods that Callisto is all done over text. Yeah. They started many, many years ago as a military courier service for a warlord, who in time became an imperator. They serve now as spies, agent handlers, and occasional assassins for the ruling warlord of Ilgrad. A saying goes that the Aratri are like swallows and reeds, hidden in plain sight, uncountable, and legion. The Aratri serve as a hidden check and balance to keep provincial warlords from overreaching and are assumed to instigate and inflame regional rivalries to that end. Nice. So purposely keeping these regional warlords and such um, going. Perfect. <laughs> Spell it Erotria. Yeah. Or laws. Okay. So, we've got regions, so I'll just add these to the list up here. Speaking of the veil, what about it? Are you getting married? <laughs> okay, we'll add this in. Uh, so, let's see, Vitris Mons. The southernmost province bounded on the south and southwest. Orange one at the bottom. There we go. Orange. Vitris is known for lumber and woodwork as well as sturdy and accurate longbows and crossbows. The diviners of old Somnus, though, are regarded with fear and suspicion. The river Umbral. Orange. Yeah. Orange. Running from the mountains of Kar to the far shore of Ibris. The Umbro is a major trade waterway. Oh, I know what this one is. Uh, fisher folk and distilleries of iron gut tar. And smuggler apples for amber grease, scuttle, and other unsavory item. Hybris. Provincial capital and trade harbor. Reliant on, to an extent, on labor and slaves from Danos. The craftsmen of Hybris are 
renowned for their ornamental woodcraft as well as the quality of their longbows and crossbows. Uh, Somnus, the eastern settlement, a town that started as a lumber camp, became primary lumber yard and clearing house for Vitris. Somnus lumber, properly treated, is said to make the best cast for distilling iron guitar to commemorate the end of a cutting season. Lumber crews hold ritual battles, which are tests of skill, strength, and drinking prowess. Fatalities are common. Oh, wait, whoops. Oh, no, I'm, I'm reading. Any settlement on this waterway must have a road or lane called Canal Street. There we go. Old Somnus, a dead city close to the base of the mountains in the south. Its, case, its gates are closed for trade, but supplicants are always welcome to the underground cloisters, where monks and druids, diviners, and hedge oracles seek answers to the great mysteries, to the great mysteries beyond the Sea of Glass. Nice. Sepulchrum Volpez. So someone can graffiti the sea off? Yeah. There we go. Um, the Tomb of Wolves, a small mountain town on the western boundary of Vitris. Some mining, some farming, and some hunting. Good leather. The best wolf tongue jerky, okay, known for a titanic set of obsidian doors carved into the face of the mountain, flanked by stone wolves large as ogres. The doors never opened or been made to open. Travelers have reported dreams of fangs and dark wood, dark woods, and a persistent hunger for rare meat. Are the wolves bigger than Chani, though? They would have to be, right? If they're as large as ogres. Good stuff. We have poor hole lane down our way. <laughs> poor hole lane. Jesus Christ. Guess what is always scratched off? Yeah. <laughs> the, the gay quarter in Manchester is on Canal Street. The C and S never last more than a day when they replace the sign. Jeez. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it comes from the mass graves from burying the poor. Jesus. <laughs> Poo hole street. <laughs> Come up with another. <laughs> At least no one's scratching off the R. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I think they are. That's what it is. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is, dude. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. <laughs> Get it together, dude. Get it together, dude. What the hell is going on? Alright. <laughs> Uh, hitting three. So, up next is... Silly Dutch. Dude, Ice is Canadian, I think, or something. Or... Not Canadian. Uh, lives in Canada. <laughs> Abdi Cheres. Abdi Cheres? Abdi... It's all the same, dude. It's a suggestion from last week when we made the map. Not English. Am I Dutch to you? Yeah. Non-English. Everybody who isn't English is Dutch to Ram. What the fuck? Um, ceremonial swords is what it says. Ceremonial swords. Okay. Prominent figures are allowed and expected to carry their signature swords. Their abdichere. The sword is in length between a forearm and the entire arm with a broad blade and a slight curve. These blades are made for beauty, not strength, and are functionally seen as identification of that person or family. Uh, old families have swords that are broken multiple times. Instead of smelting the entire sword, expert blacksmiths rebind the broken pieces, pieces with a special blue alloy called hydum. This process makes the abdichere looks look more unique and scarred. I can fix yeah, oh, that fucking guy, dude. Jesus. Did he respond to the scarlet fever test? <laughs> the dick test. Yeah. 
front. Here comes the Weebry. Jesus. Can we try and fix you? I mean, probably not, dude. Um, hmm. I like it because it's kind of... Yeah, we're here to mostly bond ourselves. All right. You need a dick test? Don't... Yeah. <laughs> Get a vet in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I need someone who's uh, used to... Oh, <laughs> uh, no, never mind. I can't... I, I have a joke, but I'm not going to make it because it... It it would almost pseudo be like making a joke about somebody in the Discord, and that would be kind of weird. <laughs> it's not about you, but yeah, Don kind of, Don kind of got it. <laughs> I promise I won't get offended. No, no, no. It's not offense. It's not offensive. It's just like a little weird, you know? It's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So. I promise to get offended. Yeah, now I'm now I'm upset. Uh I like this. It kind of goes in line with the um with the whole idea uh vibing in a coffin. What's up, dude? Uh I heard lore, I'm in. What's the topic? Uh, so the topic right now is, uh, in our Discord, we have a weekly world building prompt where members of the community are allowed to throw in suggestions if they like. Uh, and every week we have the Lorgasm on Friday where we go over and, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're saying that now, dude. Yeah. Um, we go over suggestions, we add them to the world, kind of, you know, make them work. Uh, for this one, we're adding it to, uh, a yeah, a background to a region, um, and we're going to be running uh, a game, uh, a different type of game, not necessarily, you know, D&D &D or Pathfinder, but something interesting. That is if we don't. Yeah, if. Big if. Uh, okay. At the moment, you're heckling me. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like this idea, the ceremonial swords. Um, I think it kind of falls in line with the, uh, the whole, uh, what is it? The Secatrix? Secatrix idea? Um, every anti-German. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very anti-German in here. Um, <laughs> sword swallowing, 5%. All right. Uh, I think it, it works in line with that. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I like the special blue alloy. I think like if we can take inspiration from here, it's the whole um, you reforge the the sword in gold, right? S stop it, beef, dude! Don't don't do that. Um, because uh, Japan has that already, right? Like the repair with gold. Um, it's called Kintsugi Golden Joinery. Uh, technically, this is for like broken pottery, I guess. Was what I'm reading it. Um, but. I, yeah, I like the idea that since it's very ceremonial, uh, maybe gold works better, right? That's, uh, you know, it's an, I know. Okay. So it's inspired from that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we just go with gold outright because gold is still like a very rich, you know, like maybe there's somebody with an, an, an all gold sword. That'd be fucking crazy. Um, Yeah. So, but, uh, I definitely don't want this to be like a, I definitely don't want people to go lame with this, with like, the sword can cut through mountains. I think, uh, Ram made that joke earlier, but like, no, dude, we're not, we're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah, all gold sword. Crazy shit. Yeah. The man with the golden sword. Yeah, there it is, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's it, dude. Now, now we're getting back to the UK references, you know? <laughs> James Bond, 007. Right. Um, yeah, I like that. I, th I think it goes in line with the, the ritual, like the, the secret of the ritualistic scarring. Uh, up next, I'm going to read this one, but I'm not going to add it. Uh, Domus Arigato. The House of Gratitude is a rumor of an abandoned academy deep in Amleth's Rise. It is said 
automatons were constructed and operated here, though all evidence was washed away by magma. Automatons built here were not treated with respect, and legend goes that they are what triggered the magma flow. Yeah. <laughs> the celestial elf. Yeah. Domus Arigato. Yeah, the House of Gratitude does, however, sound, yeah, sound like a fancy broth, brothel. Yeah. Dude, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> out, out of the joke entry, we get <laughs> Domus Arigato. Or rather, I'm not, I'm not going to call it Domus Arigato. The House of Gratitude. Uh, Maybe this is, yeah, like this is what they call all brothels. Gratitude houses, the house of gratitude. The house of gratitude in the village is etc. etc. Right. It's yeah, it's a franchise of the rampant ram. Yeah, rampant ram presents the house of gratitude. Yeah, houses of gratitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The house of gratitude. We'll just say brothels within Ilgrad region. I thought this place was Roman with Roman with Japanese culture. Damn. It's both. Yeah, we're mixing it up. Don't you want orc courtesans? House of the happy ending? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Some meat will certainly be served. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, orc G's, dude. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm playing an orc courtesan. I've changed my mind. Yeah. Nuance, dude. Yeah, we gotta we gotta fit both in. <laughs> no pun intended, you know. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, coffin is left. Of course, dude. Of course. <laughs> All right, we've got some more miscellanea continued by Ice here. Um, <laughs> we head back to the infamous job squad underground gay muscle club. <laughs> we lost the, dude, they just keep leaving, dude. They don't want to be here. Match left, and it's all over. <laughs> yeah, are you headed out, dude? <laughs> Unable to vibe. No, that's the that's the coffin guy, dude. He couldn't vibe it. I'm still here. <laughs> you heard courtesans and orcs, and you just said, I, I can't go. I can't leave. <laughs> um. Actually, I'll add this back up to miscellaneous over here. So we'll just go here like this and this. Wow, dude, it fucking doesn't keep this going. All right. Um. Wait. Okay. Okay. So it starts with uh, Enominatus. Oh, wait, whoops. Let's move up. There we go. Okay. Like the steelworks in The Simpsons. Silently judging. I know they're there. Roscoe. It's where they play garage metal. Very expressive. All right. Good shit. Enominatus. Formal excommunication from service to a clan or a warlord. A no-name sword, a rusted blade. Some term, some turn to banditry or thievery or smuggling. Some may find service with a new clan, but they'll have to start from the bottom with freshly scarred youngling. Tough. Very tough. Uh, Venari Scalis. Scalise. I don't know. Scale Hunt. A custom steadily gaining popularity. Oh, a custom steadily gaining popularity among the better off clans involving the use of trained Xyla scale hounds to hunt prey like wild boars and lesser worms. And other more exotic and dan dangerous, dangerous creatures, a scale hunt can last weeks depending on the appetites of the hunter. There are whispers that in the dark coastal forest between the Ink Deep and the Pale North Sea, 
The prey of scale hunts are veil touched in humans, and sometimes even orc runs from no name villages. Holy shit, dude. Um, did you start from the top in yours? Started from the bottom? Rough apprenticeship. The most dangerous game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. So this makes like prominent that orcs are like the predator, you know? I used to be decent at making that sound, the predator made, the clicking, but I can't do it anymore. Or else I would have uh, tried to make that sound right now. Alright, last but not least, pull monus. I'm not going to try it. Uh, pull monus lig lignum? Hmm. Try it now. Yeah, I can say that and I cannot then do it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds more like the orcs are like ancient Athenians. Oh, rather than, you know, yeah, lignum balls. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking knew it, dude. Timber lung. A recent disease making its way through lumber crews working along the coast. Characterized by heavy coughs, tinnitus of the left ear, just left, and persistent bouts of vertigo. Not fatal, but over time has, seen, has been seen to impact cognition and sleep cycles. A common uh, palliative remedy is a warm saltwater bath, which reduces the severity of the symptom. Appears to affect orcs exclusively, with other races being more or less unaffected except for a very minor nausea akin to sea sickness. Uh, the ca the suspicion at present is, is caused by a particular breed of, breed of mold and the general recommendation for ca casualties has been cremation instead of burial. A secret. The cause is not mold. It is not quite magic, but there is an intelligence at work. Something from the far depths from older history. Could be good. Could be good. This could tie in with that lumber clan and their demon deal. Devil deal, dude. Devil. Come on now. Good stuff. All right. Same shit, different pile. All right, well. Very, uh... Very elegant phrasing. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, we'll do clans of how narrow minded of you. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Brought in your mind, dude. We'll just do clans. So we got two of these. Boom. There we go. Let's take that back. Sorry for hitting the mic. There we go. Okay. So, Clan Volspare. Volspare. Currently the ruling clan of Vitris under the leadership of Legat Legatus. Is your mic on a boom arm? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so occasionally it's, it's like sitting right in front of me then, so. uh, under the leadership of Legatus, uh, Balian of Hybris, the clan flag and banner is a fist holding three arrows, black on a field of dark green. The clan controls most of the lumber trade and are rumored to control some of the smuggling routes as well. Trade competitors and friendly rivals to the clan holding Danos. Major rivalry with the clan holding Ebers. Nice. Uh, and here is a minor clan. So we'll say this is a major clan and a minor clan. The minor clan of Etrus under the nominal leadership of Magister Kresk of Old Somnus. Not a clan of fighters, but of drunks, distillers, oracles, and drunk oracles who run Iron Guitar Distillery. Um, the clan flag and banner is a moon of five stars there's a moon and five stars sorry uh gray on a field of black no rivalries of note yeah or glando bloom <laughs> plays balian yeah i was thinking maybe we maybe we stick with like more traditional fantasy orc names rather than going 
Because I, I feel like, I don't know. Hmm. We'll, th we'll think about it. Gunk. <laughs> when you think of an org, you're like, that's your, that's your first one. Yeah, all the existing all the existing PCs have had orc names, right? Grust, thrust, or whatever. Grusk, yeah. I think I mostly think of orcs, right? Yeah, Orc and Wilson, Baramir, yeah. What's Monday orc name? Monday's orc name. That wasn't particular orky. You're fair. Yeah, fair enough. There are exceptions, but I think, <laughs> I think majority. Picture an org named Wendy. Yeah, go, go on. <laughs> Jeez. Jesus Christos, dude. You guys are, I love them. <laughs> an org named Wendy. Wendy the Orc Courtesan. All right. Sounds like my first girlfriend. Monday, there were no orcs beef. Uh, there is an orc character. His name is like Gash. Gosh. Gosh. Um. That's right. The slang for vagina. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of didn't want to reveal that information. <laughs> no idea how Shad hasn't tormented him. I mean, I think it's because they're new people, right? <laughs> so, so I think if if yeah, if Ram and Chris were to start in, it, I'd have to be finding a fucking new member for Monday. <laughs> Gash is a frontliner as well. Gash gets hit every time. Yeah, all right. Hit with fists or rods. We lost one without even playing. Yeah. Yeah, Gash is a very English phrasing. Dude, it's gosh, like gosh golly. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> it's like gh. Guh, gosh, gahash, gahash. I don't know. Gahash sounds a bit better, as like an orc name. Is that the is that the sequel to Fern Gully? That reminds me of the dubbed orcs now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oshkosh, bagosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bagosh. Yeah, oh, the dubbed orcs, yeah. Man flash. <laughs> Dude, those videos are so good. The dubbed orcs. Gosh. <laughs> also, the, um. <laughs> I think I sent one, but there's the. <laughs> there's like the West Virginian orcs. Um. <laughs> and they're all like yipping like eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
let me take a quick stretch. <sighs> Damn, we've been doing this for an hour and 20 minutes already? What the fuck? Okay. I feel like you guys have been annoying me all day. Your creative way. Yeah, sorry, dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just took a sip of water, too. Hey, settle down with the phrasing. All right. Um, the magical cast, I think. Magical... The magic cast in Ilgrad. The magic cast in Ilgrad. So, in the Ilgrad clans, leaders often retain those that have dimensions to the other region through their strength. Sorcery not under rivals is dangerous. Specialized troop. Wild card. Okay. Here we go. Let us copy this. Drop it in. You need to finish this dude slang and then another thread. Got some extra. Another thread of what? Um. Let's see. So, in the Ilgrad clans, leaders often retain those adept in magic to secure their grip on the region and improve their strength. Society not under a clan rule is seen as dangerous, and specialized troops hunt down these wild cards. See the cancel. I'm gonna have a going, dude. Dude, off the bed. Sleepy time already. <laughs> Later, dude. Uh. <laughs> Sorcery not under clan rule is seen as dangerous and specialized troops hunt down these wild cards. The following casts are common and highly sought after. The guy that wants to play until midnight. Yeah, no shit, dude. Sleepy time with the baby. <laughs> hey, don't forget your bottle, Mike. I'm <laughs> just <laughs> Uh, yeah, there it is. I lied. I'm just gonna jerk off. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> See you in two minutes. Dude, just the enjoy with the fucking, uh, <laughs> with the exclamation mark is just too fucking funny to me, dude. Let's <laughs> see you in two minutes, man. Good shit. <laughs> Patience. <laughs> oh, man. I had to take a drink of water for that one. God damn. All right. Uh, so we have Theurges. Adept at foreseeing future plans, gaining insight and influencing. They specialize in occult and divine magic and when employed, rise to be top advisors. Cool. Um, immediately beef messages me. <laughs> it just drops a fucking... <laughs> here's, here's, here's a link. It's not sexual, though. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. Uh, shamans, wild folk using primal sources to listen to and control the earth, fauna, and flora. Uh, often employed as part of battle groups and scout capa capabilities, excellent ambushers. Philumni, accountants, book readers, and writers, history keepers. Uh, hold secrets rumored to be part of the thread. Use arcane magic to do their work. Generally shy away from the dangers of battle, but most capable among the users of magic. Considered the lowest class by the bloodthirsty folk for their alleged cowardice. Just replying to that 1 3 a.m. message you sent me. Yeah, yeah. What you doing, dude? That's <laughs> that's, that's the 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> dude, that's so good. I remember seeing this. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to read this on stream, dude. Maybe this was a. Maybe this is a rule I should add to the Discord. Please do not announce to the server when you are going to masturbate. This has been a recurring issue, and I'm not sure why some people have such underdeveloped social skills that they think that a server full of mostly male strangers would need to know that. 
No one is going to be impressed and give you a high five, especially considering where that hand has been. I don't want to add this to the rules, since it would be embarrassing for new users to see that we have a problem with this, but it is going to be enforced as a rule from now on. If it occurs, you will be warned, and then additional occurrences will be dealt with at the discretion of the mod staff. Thanks. That's funny, dude. I remember seeing that one a while back. Solid, funny post. <laughs> Mostly. Yeah, you've been warned, dude. You've been warned. <laughs> All right. Uh, and last. It looks to be the last suggestion. So, last but not least. It is Disserficio? Dis Disserficio. Disserficio. Disserficio, right? Disserficio. I don't know how to say this shit. I don't know where you guys come up with these names sometimes. Discur, dis, disserficio? I don't know. So, a practice com, a practice common in the north. Yeah, don't pull anything and get it in the bed yet. A practice common in the north and west of Ilgrad, meaning dismantle and rebuild. A wooden building is carefully disassembled inspected rotten or broken parts replaced and built again this happens every seven years while initially a draconian building code to increase lumber sales the practice has greatly reduced the risk of collapse and helped propel building techniques in the region homes are often just slightly relocated to make place for larger roads or have the bedrooms face the rising sun uh, in rarer instances small fortresses have moved to capitalize on gained ground that's pretty interesting there is even a small village called Visitor that has moved six times in its entirety for better grazing grounds for their oxen to exploit a recently discovered silver vein and escape a meandering river. Nice dude. Cool, so we've got a, a good amount of stuff. Stir core. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. So let me try to get an idea of where we're at with this. Um, so I Googled Latin shit. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Um, nice. Okay. So that is all these suggestions. Uh, so let's try to, let me think, how can I do this? Um, I'm trying to think how can I do this on stream because I have the image of the region so I want to have an idea for how many of these have been named now and kind of placed so was that for milk let's see whoops all the way up too far up okay Okay, so we've got Jelu Vilam, also known as the Wheatlands. So that's a region that has been named. That's one. We've got Arbor Damas, the purple lumber zone, close to Almas. Okay. We have got uh, what else? We have Nixerum. <laughs> up top so the top three have been named um cool we've got what else uh ch -ch -ch -ch. vitris mons okay how about we name one damianus okay Jesus Christ. So we have Vitris Mons. Um, the mountains in the south. Okay. Uh, and then we have, what else? I think there's some overlap here. Uh, Western boundary of Vitris. Okay. Another one can be Tempest Wankus. Yeah, that's a 
a solid suggestion as I am working this out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, okay. So we've got four areas named. We still have two that are not named, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Nick's room, Mercera's, a stronghold of trade, uh, orange on the map. Oh, yeah, there is some. You're working out. Okay. So the suggestion, I think, for the one, the mountains of Karth, the, the large settlement that's in the mountains is Mercera, right? Uh, I think we'll go with that over. There's another. Ah, we'll see. Okay. Um, we are down to aid. Yeah, all these anus references are just killing in the chat, dude. Uh, okay. <laughs> the House of Gratitude. Oh, clan is the. This is the clan that's ruling. Okay. No one is here but us. We scared them off. Exactly, dude. Perfect. Okay. So we have one major clan name. We have... Um, one major clan name. And four regions named. So we need six more clan names. And... Three more region name, I believe. And then I can kind of like gather this all together because this will be stuff that we share. And we already suggested three. Three what? Clan names? So this one runs out another week? Um, I don't know. So I was thinking about, I could probably just do it right now. Um, we should kind of like figure out what the main stuff with the with each of these locations is, and then kind of make some of these places um, connect, right? Because, hmm, let me think. Um. Roman Japanese I got nothing yeah I'm well I'm, I'm actually trying to like figure the let's see let's do English let's see The ter so terminus is the ending, the boundary, the limit. Okay. I feel like the middle is just Ilgrad of Ilgrad. Yeah, that's that's uh, I'm not even accounting for that. So we've got red named, we've got light blue named, we've got purple named, we've got orange named. So we just need uh, dark blue, which is where Ibris and all that is, and then green. Green is like the borderlands to the south. They're kind of like the gateway into Ilgrad from the Sea of Glass. So, uh... Dark blue is Ibris then. Why would it be Ibris? That's just the name of the large city in there. It's not the... Like, there's another city just as large as Ibris in the region. Like, port cities. We have a city called Hybris and a city called Ibris. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, nice, dude. Vit Vitrum Porta. Might get confusing with the other area. Oh, Vitris. Yeah.
Let's see. Porta. Let's see. Vi porta. Vi porta. Hmm. Um. Let's see. What else? Uh. Let's check that. Porta. Ostium. Be another one. Peter and Porta. Introitus V3. Hmm. Uh, so like gate. Um, Yanua. Let's. I'm trying to look at the other ones. Genoa. Forez. Entrance gate. Folding doors. Double doors. Forez. Vitrum Forez. Vitrum Porta does sound good though. Uh, okay, so then green would be Vitrum Porta, right? Yeah, Osseus, Osseum Porta, use Vite Bloodlands. Mm. What was Vitrus? Oops. Oh, that's also glass. Hmm. So you have glass mountain. Hmm. Maybe we can change the name to oh, because adjacent to the sea of glass, the glassy. But that would be green. That wouldn't really be orange, right? I think green is like really like the major adjacent. To the sea of glass. Orange kind of has more connections with the like Krasny area, I think. What if we did. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think. It's kind of tough because uh, Jason's to the sea of glass, so. I think Vitrum Porta makes more sense for green, right? Or Vitrus Porta, Vitrus Porta. Oh wait, I think you just got the color wrong. Cause the southernmost province bounded on the south and southwest Hey, I think you just got the color wrong because the southernmost is green. Maybe, yeah, maybe you just got the color wrong. <laughs> green, not orange. All right. So now, now we're deciding between Vitrum Porta and Vitrus Mons. Glass Mountains is Vitrus Mons. Vitrum Porta or Vitrus Porta is glass gate basically the gateway to the sea of glass i assume okay so we'll change this at least so we know it's green so then hmm Berdomus, jelu vilam nixonem will i vote my suggestion <laughs> yes I like the Vitris Porta, I think. Mostly because it. And I think Mons would be better used for orange, anyways. Alright. Vitris Porta, and then. Something Mons for orange. Uh, Vitrum Porta. Yeah, put that. Perfect. Okay. So. 
Yeah, so this region being... Hmm. We wanted both of the... We wanted two regions having kind of like a, a big thing on lay, uh, lumber. Tudemons. Relating to Krasny, basically. Tower Mountain. Tudemons. That sounds pretty pretty good. Uh, okay. Tudemons, then. Tudemons. And Tudemons has Mencetta within it. So, cool. Alright, so we got one, two, three, four, four. Five, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay. So. Could also put a tower there. Yeah, there, well, there is that, um, I think that's Mencetta because Mencetta is the location that, mm, uh, yeah, one of the main connections to the rest of the continent is Mencetta, the stronghold of trade in the mountain. Um, Tudis, nice. Okay. Tower Mountain. Okay. All right. So we've got one. Two, so we've got everything but the blue. And so blue is a ton of hills. So hill in Latin is what? Uh, Collis. That's mountain, hill. Tomb, Tumulus, Jugum, Clevis, <laughs> Clevis, Collis, um, Alta Collis. What's Alta? Hi. Awesome call us. Awesome, awesome call us. Bone Hills. Hmm. The fuck went it? There we go. Copper, maybe? What would that be? Coupli? I don't know. Callus, oh, Autum, Gold Hills, that'd be cool, that'd be cool, Callus Autum, the Gold Hills, Golden Hills, lots of wheat, bread basket, uh, the Wheatlands, Jelum is already the Wheatlands, right, Jelum Vilam, Jelu Vilam, uh, they have ice wheat, that's kind of like the bread basket. Hmm. Cause yeah, the reason that one the reason that one came around, the light blue, is because we have a major city, which is a harbor, and we also have like a fucking We also have another major settlement right in the middle of the plains. And it was like there's no resources around them. Like why the fuck is are people settling here? And I think that was the reason we came up with food. Like maybe this is the the bread basket, so to speak. Right. It all it also makes sense that the majority of it oh marble. That could be yeah, that could be good. Uh but I was gonna say it also makes sense that Amless Fries basically watches over that whole region, right? Like the majority of land in the breadbasket is connected directly to Ilgrad, right? So that's kind of like the, it makes more sense that it's there as well. Um, Lapis. Hmm. I do want to kind of cut some of these down. I like Vitor's Porta, but I think like 
like instead of to the mons, what if it was like to the mon, like to the mon, all one word, to the wrong, to the to the to the mon, because I don't want every name to be like one two one two one two right, like we've got Jeluvelam, which I like. I don't even know if you really like the only other way would be like Jeluvelam, right? Jeluvelam. But Jelu Jelu Vilam, I think is nice. Arbor Damas, I think is good. Nixidem, Tudemon, Vitus Porta. So the last one would be like marble. Yeah, just mashing together some words, exactly. So if we go, what's marble? Marmor. And then we had hills, right? Which was the fuck was hill? Hill Callus. What if it was like call? Hmm. Marble. Marmoris. Marmora. But lapis is stone. Stone. Yeah, lapis. Marmor Vallis. Yeah, call him Marmor. Call him Marmor. Marmor, yeah, Marmor Vallis. Marble Valley. Oh, nice. Vallez. Collarmore. Collarmore. Ankara. Hmm. Man, we suck. Dude, it's just Latin is tough. <laughs> Marmoris. I like Marmor Vallis. I think that's like maybe Valley is a better, right? Valley. Um Valles. What else we got? Uh Valis. Cavum. That's that's a cave. Never mind. Call me more. Yeah. Lapi Vallis. Lapi Vallis. Lapi Vallis? Stone Valley. Hmm. Could be good. Lap Valise. I think we got it, dude. Lap Valise? That's a pretty good name. There we go, dude. Lap Valise. And that is. Uh, dark blue. The valley in between the stone. Yeah. Nice, dude. Okay. So, yeah, because I want to be able to finish, I, I mean, maybe not finish on stream, but I want to be able to have this done so that by Wednesday, I'm, like, we're getting everybody ready for Callisto, right? Like, that's the, the grand goal here. Um, so, yeah, we're so back. We're so back. I want you to tell, here it is. Here it is. I'm going to play this single clip. Damn, I can't see how long. Oh, here it is. Damn, it's so quiet. Why is this fucking so quiet, dude? Could you be, were you even able to hear it? I want you to put the word out there. That we back up. <laughs> Understand me? We back up. Damn, dude. Fucking wire. I want you to put the word out there that we're back up. You understand? We're back up. Here, let me do something real quick. I'm gonna mute my desktop audio. Let's see, because there's a secondary one. 
Dude, it's so quiet. Never mind. Fuck it. I'm not gonna do that. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll make it a, I'll make it a fucking soundboard. We're back up, then. We're back up. I want you to put the word out there that we're back up. Okay. Um. Clans can be part of Callisto application. I think I don't know. I feel like I would like to at least have the major clans taken care of. Um like the ruling clan taken care of, and then people can make minor clans, right? They can insert like little smaller kind of political clans, right? Um clan name at least, yeah. So I think like Vitris, the suggestion, if I'm not mistaken, was uh clan Volsper. Volsper, right? So clan Volsper. Volsper. Um that was the major, that was the ruling clan of Vitris Porta, right? Um, and so I think then, uh, uh, actually I gotta fix my volume before I start making music go again. Let's see. <laughs> it's planned. You understand me? Be back up. Alright. Is animal la names too lazy? I think it's too lazy. Bear, cat, etc. I feel like the clan should be named after the river for that one place, the Umbro clan. Yeah, that's pretty good. Stronghold in Ibris. I forgot what colors. Dude, just pull it up, dude. We we outlined it for this reason. Yeah, I think Vosper could stay for green. And then I think the Hmm. Yeah, but that is pretty good. Um We're too lazy for colors. Exactly. Then... Hmm. The Umbro... Umbro clan for lab... For Vitas Porta. The Umbro thing was a pitch for Lab Valise. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, maybe like clan Umbral. The thing is, is, like, all three of these places have the Umbro River rush, like, running through their land. Like, for, especially for Lap Valise, like, that's entire, right? Hmm. But at the same time, the green area has, like, uh, they're the source. Yeah, that's the thing, right? The source of this river comes from... Come from uh, uh, Vitus Porta. That's the thing. Hmm. What if we made? Let's see. What was the description of Clan Vosper? One schooling uh, like that is the clan flag and banners on the field of green. Most of the lumber trade are rumored to control some of the smuggling routes as well. Trade competitors and friendly rivals of Clan Hold. Danos. Oh, you know. It's, it's actually funny because, um, yeah, wait, so you're talking, sorry, the coast. Yeah. The thing is, is the clan that controls Danos and the clan that controls Ibris is the same. So Vos the Volspear one, you already messed up, dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like I like the idea that that Lap Valise Umbro 
they name themselves after the river because they control the exit, right? Like they, um... Yeah. Oh, and actually, they own Danos and Ibris, so they can literally, like... When, when, when we're saying, like, they literally own the land, if you ever want anything to leave, like, towards Ibris, towards the coast, like, they control that whole thing, right? They control the major cities on either side. So, like, they do kind of have a stranglehold on the Umbro River in the first place. Like, Volspear would have, like, little outlets, right? But... You know, nothing goes past Danos upriver and nothing goes beyond Ibris at the at the mouth of the uh, the river into the sea. So it makes sense that the um that yeah, I think we justified why dark blue is Umbro, right? Yeah, but the stronghold is in Ibris. Yeah, I think the stronghold for sure is Ibris. Danos, we were thinking is like a major point because uh, we were talking that maybe the crossing, the river crossing, is between Danos and whatever that large place is across the way from it, right? Like the actual big, like big, um, yeah, the big. Uh... Oh, hybris. Okay, yeah, that's cool. So this would be hybris. Okay, nice. So. The river Umbro, right? Okay, cool. So, so this is confirmed, right? We've got this. Sick. Okay. Hmm. We talked about how the Wheatlands probably uh, changes hands quite often, right? So, we'll go AKA the Wheatlands. Mentula Noctua. What is that? But yeah, this is uh this place is like constantly uh, just a cool name. But what would it what does it mean? Yeah. Nocturnal Mentula, what is that? Night mines? Oh, nocturnal brain. Nice. Okay. So, don't worry about that. All right. Okay. <laughs> Are these orcs of the night? Yeah, mountain orcs. It could make sense with orange. Tudimon, which is... I forgot what the meaning of that was. It was like... Mountain Tower? Yeah. Um... The Tower Mountain. Yeah. They've also got... Kind of like... Hmm. Kind of got everything. They got like lumber. They've got... Mining operations in the foothills they've got the mountains themselves they got a major port along one of the rivers clan clusterfuck orcs of the night work in the houses of gratitude good shit clan mentula noctua clan poop crows jesus christ um, yeah, because these names are going to kind of, we're the defecation avians, never forget. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. This is why we ain't got new people, dude. <laughs> Fucking it up. Okay. <laughs> this is why nobody ever joins the discord. Dude. All right. Um... Okay. So. 
part of me is kind of regretting the Latin twist. The Roman twist. <laughs> Let me think. Um, uh, hmm. Because I do kind of want these names to somewhat give you an idea for these clans, right? Um, and I think Latin is such a Latin is such a limited language that it feels like we're gonna start st stepping on toes, dude. Um, and I'm wondering, would it not have been better had we gone uh, just like? fantasy orc naming style convention like maybe the locations are latin but maybe the clans and the the character names are more fantasy orc i don't know but umbro is good and volspear is okay already so that's like that's not an issue yeah The thing is, Rome is a few months ago for me, while Japan is almost a decade. Let's go with Orc. Alright. Mush, Orc, and Latin together? That could work, right? Um... Imagine if we go 40k work. <laughs> it's like Snazclaw, the noisy gits, the manglers. <laughs> the gits of the storm, dude. Uh, okay. So. So if we go orc. Dumb pitch remaining clan names riff on region names, right? Okay. So like tower coin or tower uh, mountain. Um, we've got Jelum uh, Vilam, which is like Jelum Vilam is like I think it was like Field of Wheat or something like that. Arbor Domus is like the home of trees. Nixidum, I don't know. Tudemon. Clan Villis for light blue. Uh, Clan Arboreus for purple. Clan Nixus for red. Mm. 3 p.m. here. I'm going to go do what Ram's doing. All right, dude. Have it going, bud. Uh, hmm. It's not orc orc, but it kind of builds on it. Hmm. Hmm. I might have to think on this. Uh, maybe I just need to do off stream work to knock out the stuff by Wednesday. Because my idea is that these actually my idea is that I don't know if any of these locations has been ruled by the clan that initially ruled this region from the start right um the idea is that we're probably gonna be changing hands a lot in the war game portion of it so i feel like if we're constantly changing hands there's a new you know a new legatus legatus uh in play then I translated Um Ro Ruffa Um Ruffa from an orc random name gen to Latin and it gave me Ponderati. 
could be how you get these names. Oh. Quick fire prompt just for names. Nah, because I think... I think, um... I actually don't know what the next world building prompt would be. Uh... Hmm. Yeah. Clan, oh, clan name by color. Yeah. I have an idea so that to pick from. This is just start us off. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, revisit slang. It's been doing well. Let me. What do you think about it? Uh. Slang has been doing well, but I think that's kind of because of the, uh, campaigns right like i feel like i feel like the more random shit we say in the game is gonna kind of like spin out into slang more and more right so i don't know if it's necessarily like a prompt or that'll just be one that kind of continues on because i don't know if much has happened actually to kind of give people inspiration for new slang all the all the slang that's been yeah let that run a few weeks. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like all the new slang has come directly from the games we played, right? Um, slang is mostly memes, right? Uh, it's kind of like just... Some of it's jokes, right? Drop a keel on it, that's a joke. As fast as the wing out flies. But, um... I'd follow you to the va to the boundary of the veil. That came from a campaign. That came from the game. That was something that, uh... uh Chris said, like, off-cuff. Um... Uh, what else? I've never seen a horse. That's kind of like a meme, but, um, you know. Yeah, I think that, I think that'll be naturally, yeah. I think that'll kind of naturally grow as we continue running the games. And more people kind of introduce more slang and funny jokes and stuff. Uh, okay. So... Yeah, I think my, I think my, that's good. I think my brain is kind of, I think I'm at my, I'm at my end. Uh, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to think about it. Try to come up with kind of like a, I would like it that this kind of remains a bit, uh, it feels like everything is balanced. So like whenever a new person joins and they want to make like a, yeah, we're all overdosing on Latin, exactly. Um, so I think I want to, I want there to be like maybe like a little naming guide or something for players. Um, so that whenever they join, they want to be like, oh, I want to be like a member of a minor clan. Uh, we can kind of like, you know, we can kind of go through, we can run through that route. And, um, yeah. And that way there's not all these like random ass, like, you know, uh, my clan is called the Bloodstalkers, you know, like, I, I kind of want there to be, like, some sort of, like, naming convention. So maybe I have to figure out, like, the, this is the way I did it, and this should be the way that you do it if you want to name your clan. But, um, either way, I think I'll have all that done by Wednesday, and then Wednesday we'll start, like, getting everything prepared, getting all the people added to the role, getting, like, you know, confirming our list. Yeah, no Bob the Orc. Uh, confirming, like, the list of who's going to be playing and kind of starting to... Starting to get the game going. Uh, sorry for the burp. So. I think thank you all for hanging out. Um, uh, yeah, if you'd like to get involved in the community or... Um, get involved in the weekly world building prompts and stuff like that the best place to be is obviously in the discord um if you'd like to ever have a chance at being a member of the game or joining the callisto game uh <laughs> yeah just cancel on monday and in indeed uh <laughs> the best place to be is in the discord and that's the that's you know that's where you'll get the invite that's where you have the first chance at uh, joining a campaign should be you know should you want to that's where i reach out first whenever i'm looking for new players uh so in any case 
thank you all for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to think up a world building prompt, uh, get it going. Um, and I think we did a whole lot of uh, good stuff today. So thank you all. Yeah, B Bob, Bob the Orc. <laughs> Bob. All right. Thank you all for hanging out. Hope you have a good day or a good evening. Hope you have a good Friday and a good weekend. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with our uh, Saturday campaign, The Shaded City, Session 2. Uh, but in any case, thank you all. Hope you have a good one. See you when we see you. If not, uh, yeah. Or maybe we'll see you Saturday. If not, we'll see you when we see you. So have a good one. Later, guys.